the safe country list, the super visa, just two of several policy changes that affect refugees looking to come to Canada. And joining us now for more on the changes, here's John Ibbotson, author of Stephen Harper, writer at large for the Globe and Mail and a former senior fellow with CG, the Center for International Governance Innovation. Welcome back to TVO, John. Hey, Steve. Always good to see you here. I want, as we consider this topic, for you to take us back five years to one of the most, uh, well, pick your adjective, notorious, difficult, controversial moments in Canadian history as it relates to refugees. And that was a significant uh, boatload of Tamil refugees off the coast of British Columbia, which sparked some significant changes in how this country looks at refugees. Tell us about that story. It was one of the great gambles of Stephen Harper's political career. Um, this is the only conservative party in the developed world that depends on immigrants for its support and gets support from immigrants. Um, the immigrant vote has gone up in every one of the last elections. And in many ways, this majority government was delivered by suburban immigrant voters in the 905 ridings of Ontario. But the law and order agenda part of the government said that we have to stop allowing people to come in and game the system, flout the system. And that included um, people showing up on Canada's shores and claiming refugee status and immigration lawyers who were able to game the system and, uh, and a public that was becoming increasingly disenchanted with, a, with a, a refugee process that seemed to make it impossible for anybody ever to be expelled from the country. So the gamble was, look, if we keep the immigration intake high, if we actually increase the immigration intake, which overall, which they've done, but we clamp down on refugees, not reducing the number of refugees coming into the country, but only taking in the refugees that we want to take in, rather than the ones who just show up demanding entry, will the suburban immigrant voters who we depend on can understand that and support it? It appears that they did, um, that, that, that if immigrant voters are going to move away from the Conservatives, it's not over this issue. But five years later, it bit them when a refugee crisis emerged and Canadians suddenly woke up to discover that we had a very different refugee system than we used to have and we weren't just able to take in plane loads, in this case, of people in distress the way we had in the past. Let me go back to that situation, though, off the coast of B.C. Nearly 500 Tamil migrants arriving on our shores. What eventually happened with all of that? Well, uh, they were processed eventually, some stayed and some, and some were returned. Mm -hmm. and, the new, uh, and the system was changed. The, it was changed, in fact, ironically, it wouldn't have affected the Tamil migrants. Um, the system was changed to, to create a designated list of safe countries. These are countries where if you show up from that country and claim refugee status, we will send you back instantly and immediately because you're showing up from France. You're showing up from the United States. You're showing up from Ireland. These are not places where you've been persecuted. So if you're coming uh, from a place that is designated safe, then you, go, you are sent back. There's a very quick uh, refugee determination process, and almost invariably uh, you are sent back. And in fact, I think it's about 80 percent is the decline in people who have who are, hmm. who've just started showing up. Okay. In terms of uh, the current refugee crisis in the Mediterranean, Greece, France, other European countries have uh, decided to house refugees and have refugee, refugee camps in the meantime. What does it mean for them to be on the safe country list? Uh, it, it doesn't mean a lot. In this case, I believe, and I stand to be corrected, but the, you are going to get into Canada from Greece or from any European country that's on the list if you are a Syrian and Iraqi refugee, if you meet a set of criteria that include, up until quite recently, uh, United Nations designation. Um, so the, the safe country list isn't the factor. The, the real factor is um, obviously how much distress are you in? Um, what is your past? Do you have uh, any ties to terrorist organizations or any reason for us to fear that? Do you have family or friends in Canada who can sponsor you and, and can make sure that you, uh, you don't f fall into distress once you get here? Uh, what, are your what kind of contributions can you make? What's your job skills? What's your education? So the reason the Conservatives are under so much uh, fire um, and they certainly are under a lot of fire for refusing to take in not only more refugees but for refusing to take them in faster is the fact that they've put in this quite rigorous determination process uh, to make sure that they only get the kind of refugees that they want. So let's see how the world has changed. 25 years ago about a quarter of the new immigrants who came to Canada were in fact refugees. Any idea what those numbers are like now? It's, oh, it's a tiny fraction. I think, I, and again, I said to be corrected, about 12,000 refugees out of 285,000 huh. uh, total entrants. Uh, and, and by the way, the total entrants have changed completely too. Mm -hmm. uh, 25, uh, 30 years ago, most of the immigrants, the non-refugee intake, uh, would have been family members of existing uh, 
uh, immigrants, existing Canadian citizens. What's changed under the Conservatives is they've created a new system, basically replacing the point system with uh, what is essentially a job application. You send in your skills, uh, your language ability, you're tested, your, your, what, what education you've got, how you fit the labour market. And then rather than joining a queue, like it used to be, and when you get to the top of the queue, hi, welcome to Canada, instead, uh, governments and even private corporations can go through the list of applications and go, ah, butchers, we need butchers, so send us all your butchers. Um, and, and family class has been replaced with this new kind of new economic class immigrant. Based on your look at it, is Canada better off for that change? I think so. Uh, I think we have to be careful at not limiting family class too much because if you're in Canada and it's very important to you that your mother and father be here, then um, we could lose you as a valued new member of our society and more important as a workforce, a member of our workforce that is a taxpayer, if, they, if mom and dad can't come over. So they've created the super visa, which basically allows... Tell us about that. What is that? Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a visa that allows parents and other family members to come over for up to a decade. Uh, provided you take responsibility for their health care. So this is to prevent people from arriving, claiming citizenship, and immediately going on to the Canada Pension Plan and immediately appearing in hospitals with, with medical conditions. Um, so you, can get, you get reunification, but reunification without cost. Again, I think you have to be careful with that. But on the whole, look, to me, the, what matters is the, the total number. We used to take in 250,000 more than any other country on Earth on a per capita basis. We now take in 285,000, even more than any other country on a per capita basis. We have put two new Torontos into this country in, in the last 20 years. We've duplicated its largest city twice, and I think it has made the country infinitely richer, more diverse, more skilled, um, economically more entrepreneurial and more productive. It's been a fabulous thing. Um, and the best thing you can say about the Conservatives is they didn't cut it back. Uh, has it made the country more conservative? Because I guess the thinking is if you allow all these new people to come in and they become citizens, they're inclined going forward to vote for you. I think Stephen Harper was also gambling on that, and I think to some extent he was right. The reason the Conservatives made so many inroads in the suburban, middle-class, immigrant-heavy ridings of Mississauga and Brampton and Richmond Hill and Newmarket and Aurora is those ridings are heavily immigrant, and they tend to be South Asian or they tend to be East Asian and they tend to be more socially conservative. I think the fact that the Kathleen Wynne government's sex ed curriculum has become a national federal election issue mm -hmm. uh, speaks to that. The other interesting question, though, is will they stay that way as they spend more time in Canada? And what about their children? Will the children become like mom and dad, more socially conservative? Or they, will they become like all children everywhere have always been, uh, which is rebellious and uh, progressive? Uh, I want to find out whether or not you've uh, been able to detect any blowback on the basis of the uh, super visa uh, experiment. Uh, can you tell whether or not people who uh, are, are here as, you know, immigrants to the country and who have wanted to get family members here and it's a little I guess a little tougher to do that right now mm -hmm. has there been much blowback about that if there is I haven't heard it I spent two weeks in Mississauga doing nothing but talking to voters most of them immigrant voters they had lots of concerns and, and lots of concerns about Stephen Harper uh, but I never heard the super visa issue emerging though it must be there somewhere because you can, the NDP and the Liberals want to eliminate it and return to an increase in family class immigration. So they wouldn't be, I'm cynical, they wouldn't be making that promise if they didn't hear that it's a, it's a concern for immigrant voters. Do you think they're pandering on that, the, other, the opposition parties? It's an, election, it's an election, Steve. Everybody's pandering to everyone over everything. Do you think, based on your look at things, that Canada needs to make it easier for refugees to come here? Uh, I think we need to be careful with refugees. We don't want to become less humane, but we need. But the national security is an issue, uh, and you need to know that the people coming into this country are, are going to contribute to it and not become a security threat to it. But this is the most generous immigration program on the planet. It's obviously a deeply held national value and 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 one that needs to be protected. So. Um, uh, again, for me, as I said at the beginning, the overall intake is what matters. It's not how many refugees we take, how many immigrants we take, where we take them from. It's just are we bringing in lots and lots of people to uh, sustain the society? No, I hear you. But, but if you're an immigrant and you're in one line and you're a refugee and you're in another line and that line moves a lot faster than the immigration line, there are some immigrants who are going to be kind of ticked off with this country, right? Well, again, that's uh, where, we, where we started. The, the gamble that immigrants who came to this country legally would be the first to object to those who jumped the queue and came here claiming to be refugees. That's what the Harper government has virtually eliminated. Not eliminated refugees as such, just eliminated people showing up at airports and claiming refugee status. 
You having written the book about him, maybe you're a bit inside his head on this one and, and you can help us understand this. His initial position when the Syrian refugee crisis absolutely hit the fan was to kind of stay the course. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two opposition parties were kind of tripping over themselves to be more and more generous to the Syrian refugee situation, but he was not. That lasted about a week, and then he made some pretty significant changes, making his policy more generous as well. Why do you think? Well, but not much more generous, right? He just accelerated the intake. He didn't change the total numbers. I think his initial feeling was, uh, first of all, just the way he's run this whole election campaign is he doesn't blow things up. He doesn't throw Hail Marys. And his position was, we're cautious about immigrants that we take in from the Middle East because there are security concerns, and the majority of Canadians will support us on that. Uh, the NDP and the Liberals are being rash in trying to claim that they even could bring in 25,000 by the end of the year, as the Liberals have claimed, 10,000 for the NDP. Well, they're going to spend $100 million bucks to do it. So. Uh, and, and, and I guess ferry a whole lot of uh, cargo planes, mm -hmm. too, to, to get them here. Uh, but the Canadians would, would, would be worried about that and would wonder just if that was in the best interest of the country. But oh, once, you know, once you saw the photographs, once you saw the chaos and calamity in Europe, I think the generosity of Canadians was, uh, was stimulated. We wanted to do more. The Harper government wasn't doing much, and this is an election campaign. So he said, all right, we'll speed up the intake without actually increasing the intake, and hopefully that's the sweet spot. I don't think so, though. I think it's has damaged them. It's one of the most damaging things that's happened to them in the course of the election. Well, let's finish up on this then. Do you think, again, based on your general sense of these things, having covered many elections, that the Syrian refugee crisis has become the defining issue in this Canadian election campaign? No, I don't. I, I think the defining issues are going to still be leadership in the economy. Um, I've said this a couple of times, that we have two elections really underway. One is, do we want Stephen Harper again? Um, and uh, both, you know, a very large majority of the population seems to be saying, no, we don't want Stephen Harper again. Three times was enough. Um, so the Conservatives are trying to just move the, the bar a little bit farther up so they can get enough at least for a minority government. And then the second election is, well, all right, if the, if the vast majority of you don't want Stephen Harper, who do you want? Do you want Thomas Mulcair uh, or do you want Justin Trudeau? And in that question, I, I, you know, refugees plays into the issue of, of Harper as being cold and heartless and, and, uh, and the opposition parties claiming that, the, that they're more progressive, they're more compassionate. But it really is. Um, who do you trust? Do you trust uh, Tom Mulcair? Do you trust Justin Trudeau as a leader and on the economy? Uh, I think ultimately refugees is, a, it, while important, is, is, was not, you know, it's not going to be the ballot question. Gotcha. John Ibbotson, former senior fellow at CG, author of the new book, Stephen Harper. As always, thanks for your visit to TVO tonight. My pleasure. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.